All right. Good morning. Good morning. It's 6.31. It is April 3rd. It is hump day. Take a look at disclosure. And we are going to get into the 6.30 club. There you go. My name is Scott Redler. I'm the Chief Strategic Officer of TFULive.com. Welcome to today's 6.30 club. It's Wednesday. It's the third day of the new quarter. We have lethargic action. We are consolidating. We are correcting a little bit. We are doing what I think is pretty, uh, you know, pretty healthy considering you know, the S&P was up 10% last quarter. Stocks have major runs. So every now and then you eat a big meal. What do you got to do? You got to digest it. So anyway, let me say hello to some of my dogs around the world. Let's see who we got in uh, the house today. We got E.K. Santo. We got It's. <laughs> Time to make the donuts. I love that commercial from the 80s. What up, Bev? What up, E.K.? What up, Bill? What up, Jamie? What up, Option Wrap? I get to see you guys today. Yes, for some reason, you know, they weren't letting me uh, see the comments. But anyway, um, so, uh, you know, here we are. It's friggin' pouring in the Northeast. For three days, it's been raining. I got to give a shout out to my dogs, the Milburn Varsity Lacrosse team. They beat St. Peter's Prep yesterday, 7 6, right? Winners winning, close game like that. It's cool to see. What up, Peter? What up, Ali? What up, Don? What up, Frank Tucci? Uh, what up, the Biofarmer? How's it going, Ramsey from Canada? We got Ohio. Got a lot of individuals in the house, all trying to get the process going, trying to put together. A day, a week, a month, a quarter, which is good. Okay, at this point, let's take a quick look. Let's take a quick look at the charts right here. What do we got there? Those are the spies right there, right? All of a sudden, you know, a um, little topping tail, and then you had a inside bar. To, you know, actually, this wasn't even an inside bar. This was a little bit of weakness, actually, on uh, Monday. And then yesterday, had a gap down, and we kind of came off lows. So what do we have now? We have kind of a, a – it's – Tricky, tricky little pattern here. You know, you have five sixteen fifty, which is uh, yesterday's low, came off those off that bottom. So, with that being said, you know, um, uh, it seemed as if maybe you could put a tiny bit of risk on if you sold on Monday, you bought on Tuesday. Now you got to figure out can you add verse this this spot, and we'll see. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, the action's a fraud. The action kind of sucks. To be honest, we're a little spoiled. You know, we had a huge move. You know, uh, in the first quarter. And now you have to digest and you have to be a bit careful. You know, under trade, under trade, write that down, under trade. There are definitely specific things you could do, but if you make money and you catch a good trade, you don't need to stack a packet and rack it. You just got to like freaking, you know, make a little bit and love it and leave it, right? This could be the month of loving it and leaving. Go, go relive your college days. <laughs> anyway, um, with that being said, we're doing some price discovery. We're probably going to hear a lot about stagflation on TV. What does that mean? That means low growth and uh, high cost, which is not a great recipe for for the economy. You know, it is what it is. So you have to get out that playbook. That playbook is kind of materials and, and metals. And, you know, and at this point, uh, a lot of guys like Red Dog, you know, good call on silver and gold. It was a pretty big focus, probably the biggest focus I've had in, in that area, you know, in years. You know, I was on Liz claiming, what up, Liz? Uh, you know, talking about silver, you know, we were talking about silver um, over a month ago, you know, silver, I was saying, you know, if gold's going to 2400, silver's, you know, going to have a big catch up move. And we started talking about that here. So if you look at silver, that was when we were doing it, you can look it up, time stamped, and not, you know, being a Monday night quarterback, you know, this was, this was, this was great. No Twitter. Uh oh. Um, anyway, with that being said, uh, you know, we bought some $23 calls. We bought some $24 calls, went out a few weeks, and then last week rolled into further out. And now look at that nice little breakout on silver. And to be honest, it's nowhere in the scheme of things. You know, silver itself, you look at the weekly chart, it just poked its head above uh, this 23 area yesterday. Now it looks like it could be on its way to 27. If you remember, I showed you the weekly chart of, um, of, of gold. And uh, gold was absolutely fantastic. You know, uh, I'm not a gold bug. I, I'm not in the end of the world you know, camp. I'm in the, you know, what's trading the best, what looks the best, what has the best setup. And gold had a great daily, weekly, and monthly. Um, uh, oh, Twitter's working. All right, that's cool. So, I wrote, so this this was your chart of gold. You know, a lot of things happened here that that gave technicians and guys like me the green light to buy calls or call spread the ETF. You know, this was the weekly chart. You know, look at this nice bull flag every Saturday. I'm like, you know, take five minutes and go over your charts and, and look what a bull flag looks like on top. 
of a huge resistance area that's been intact since 2020. That's four years, four years of accumulation. Okay, and then boom, look what took place. And hey, what a quickie dink. It was above the eight-day moving average, which is where I say you want to live, you know, when you're trying to hold things. So this is your weekly, and then you go to the monthly chart that also lined up. You know, I talked about this cup and handle pattern when it was in here, when it was building. Okay, now all of a sudden, you know, it's on its way to the measured move. But as an active trader, it's 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 April 3rd, and you know, if you get paid and you use a tier system, it's probably a good spot to reduce some gold and and then wait for another setup and it continues just to go, you know, okay. Um, if you're one of those guys that, that buys a physical gold and has a war chest in his basement or uh, his closet, you know, I don't know, maybe sell a little bit of it or, or, or keep it. Congratulations. I don't have one of those things. My brother does. What up, Lance? If you're watching this last time I was at his house, I showed his war chest and people are like, don't do that. You know, people are going to come to his house and steal his gold and silver. I'm like, well, he's got a shotgun in there and a few other things. I wouldn't do that. But anyway, so gold, silver lined up, you know, really well. So hopefully you caught it. Um, I did reduce a little bit of my silver yesterday, but I did tweet you guys that I added last Thursday. That's what I do. I use my tier system. But overall, you know, if you look at the silver, <laughs> this is, by the way, this is the monthly on silver. So this is all silver is done, you know, so there's a lot of room here for wants it. And if that's the case, that means a lot of other things in the market are probably, you know, not doing so great. But anyway. Um, with that being said, um, you know, yeah, XLE has had a big move. Wow, look at that move. Look at the eight-day moving average. When sectors are above the eight-day moving averages, that's why you want to have a swing long there. I was pretty light in energy sector. I'm not going to say, hey, you know, I was all over it. My power play says Oxy. That's been one of the best plays in that group. You know, I have a different universe. But, you know, again, as the chief strategic officer of, officer of T3, I always post a chart every day. I posted this. And if you've read my ebook on moving averages, you know that's a special sector. If you want in, in the link today, click on it. You know, there's a another ebook about gaps and pro earnings gaps and things like that. You know, gotta learn, use your resources. Bottom line is big move in the XLE, you know, and then I've I've also been lifting the, the chart of the weekly. Look at the weekly, the weekly, you know. Um, gave you a, a great entry right here above the moving averages, took out the two-year high. Congratulations. It's probably a little bit overbought right here, so I'd be just a little careful jumping all in into energy because I'm sure, you know, the, the TV is going to get louder and louder about energy now. The, the spot to have been in it is when it, it crosses a descending channel, not when it breaks and it's already above a two-year high. That's when you just manage the trade. Um Option, yeah, you know what? There, there are some things in tech that are still hanging in pretty well, pretty, pretty, pretty well. Um, uh, by the way, I heard, uh, I heard, uh, Kirby Enthusiasm season was great this year. I gotta watch it, I, I, I'll, I'll probably binge watch that another time. So, which ones are acting well? Amazon is still fine, it's just you know, it's just choppy. We're in choppy conditions now, we're not in conditions of momentum. You know, Amazon's still, you know, hanging up here. You sold some strength on Monday, you were able to buy a dip. And now I kind of use this spot. You know, Google still okay. Google gave you an inside day yesterday. If you didn't take out, you know, too much on um, on the prior day, you were able to buy it. It's still above the eight day. It's still above the gap. It's still hanging in there. So, you know, this is still holding in pretty well, just taking its time. Meta acted pretty well yesterday. It was the first one to go green. You know, Meta is still holding this, this channel. This probably has a, a good, um, I would say a good, Benefit of the doubt that Meta could go red to green today for cash flow, but we'll see. Um, you know, so there are things rebuilding. You can't always be making higher highs and higher lows. Sometimes you have to rebuild. Even even Nvidia, you know, Nvidia, you know, has this. You know, remember this channel that took place here. This was a long channel, guys. This was a long channel that if you if you over traded Nvidia, you know, from July of 2023 all the way through. You know, you didn't do well. If you traded some of these, some of these patterns, like the descending trend line that broke to the upside, the ascending to the downside. This was like almost like 2001 to 2011 in the S&P. There was like, you know, 1200% movement in the S&P, but it went nowhere. And that's pretty much what Nvidia did until it broke out on um, January 8th. So the question is now, after a humongous, humongous move, how long is it going to need, you know, to be in this range? So... You know, yesterday, 
it, it, it opened or broke below 891 to start the day. Um, so it didn't really give you a good short. By the time it found its footing in the morning at the 21 day, it gave you a move off of it. And now <laughs> you took it home long because, you know, because it, it gave you a green candle on the 21 day. It's down 10 bucks in your motion. You got to deal with it. I am not long NVIDIA. I will probably look to buy it at some point. In the morning, NVIDIA yesterday looked weak. And then all of a sudden, around 11 o'clock, it, it had a nice little trigger. Okay, we wanted to see where the trigger was. Okay, this is, let's go to NVIDIA for a second. Let's use the daily chart. Right here is when finally NVIDIA gave you that five-minute chart. Yes, I, I do look at five-minute and three-minute charts. And right around here, finally, after the morning consolidation, this was your spot. Okay, then it actually even gave you, you know, a little bit of a bull flag where if you use, you know, for, for one more afternoon move. So this gave you a good move, and then it showed relative strength and gave you another one. So there are ways to make tactical cash flow without – you know, holding a position for multiple days and weeks like we tried to do in, in a lot of the first quarter. But this was so we'll look for another setup today, perhaps, you know, to make, you know, five point seven points. And yeah, that's what you do as an active trader to create cash flow. So anyway, the low here is what, 876 right now. It's uh, it's above that. It's at 884. So we'll see if that holds. You know, AMD was weaker than then um, NVIDIA, yes, SMCI is, is decent. But um, so th th listen, got to put on your day trading hat sometimes too. You can't always be holding 15 to 20 positions, massaging them and letting the market make you money unless you're really in the right sector. Um, let's see, what do you guys have? Crazy after you called the top of the market and made one more attempt and then looks like a major. Yeah, you know, listen, I, I try and make calls because that's what I do. I've been in the media since 2008. I was on CNBC probably once a week during the financial crisis. I've traded through the tech bubble bursting. I've been on Fox Business twice a month for the last five years. But really, I'm a trader. That's what I do. You know, I'd rather, this is really my my realm. Being in here, going over moving averages, tier system, looking at what's the key to the day, looking at what the obsession is. And two days ago, I started talking about, hey guys, you know, we haven't looked at the TLT in, in a long time because those who are trading, you know, the market, shorting the market because of of, of the TLT, which was different, you know, six months ago, we're not doing well. So finally, I'm like, hey, guys, you know, with, with the 10 year creeping up, you know, and the possibility of one or two rate cuts, not four or five, the market's going to get sensitive here. And P.S., you know, yesterday the TLTs opened below this 92 area, and now it's down a little bit this morning. So 91.33 is your spot. So, you know, you have to have the TLTs up. Again, you know, for a while I didn't have it up. I'd say for the last six weeks I didn't have the TLTs up. I didn't care about them. Last time I had the TLTs right here it was a great long, you know. And then, uh, you know, so now we'll see if, if, you know, I don't think this will be a problem unless it gets below 91.33. That means rates are making, you know, higher lows. Apple, you know, I haven't traded Apple since, um, really since this day. You know, I was long Apple, you know, options. It finally looked like it was going to do well. And then I got sideswiped by this. Now it, it, it truly looks like Apple is just out of play, untradeable, you know, this, and uh, it's heading down, you know, especially if, if the S&P corrects two to three percent in this quarter or in the next two to three weeks, you know, it, it looks like Apple is being taken with it. And um, at this point, you know, I used to be the Apple trade every day. Right now, there's no continuity. It's hard to make money. And it's, it's just not the place to be as an active trader. If you're an investor and you've been in it for five, 10, 15 years, congratulations, you made a lot of money. And at some point, this 198, 199 gets taken out. But the narrative around Apple is the P is too high. They're behind in AI. Their, their phones are the same damn phone. I told you guys, what was the name? The, the, <laughs> message to Tim Cook for Apple. You know what? I think you should get the, the phone that, that, that opens in half and all of a sudden turns into a mini iPad so people could you know, do their emails, you know, look at their Instagram, look at the videos, watch their video. I watched my phone like this at night to watch my shows. Watching a good show, Warrior was a great show. If you want a good show, Warrior season one through three. It's about San Francisco. It's about the Irish. It's about the Chinese coming over, establishing Chinatown. Asan, what a freaking warrior. Awesome. But anyway, and, and then you can make it thinner so you could fold it up, put it in your pocket, open it up, and create a new phone. You know, this is the same phone. It's like iPhone 175. But anyway. But they do make a lot of money in one of the best companies ever, but they, they, they got to get with it a little bit, in my humble opinion. But anyway, here's the weekly chart. Um, kind of still above 168, still above 165. It wouldn't be super duper surprising 
if we see 157 or 145 if we correct two to three percent but that's a big if anyway for today i'm going to look to buy verse levels trying to make some cash flow and, and see how it how it goes um you know bitcoin i think a lot of people got excessively bullish into the having listen you know i made decent money in bitcoin and then i've been accumulating the bito for the having it's it's april 3rd and chances are i'm going to lose money there <laughs> you know um I, it, it did hold down here um um, a few of my friends actually today hit me up this morning and said, that, you know, don't lose, you know, sight of, of, of Bitcoin right now that, you know, there's still a bunch of weeks left and, you know, there are some major wirehouses that are finally allowed to buy it and, you know, it's still fine, which I do think it's fine. It's just, I might, you know, the, the strategy that I have, I was been buying, I've been buying the 32 and a halves into this. I felt really good here. Like we were going to go and take out 73,000, go to 80,000 pre-half or right after. And now it feels like, just like the market, it might be in a range a little bit. So we'll see if this holds, we'll see if it starts to work its way back up. But thank goodness silver made me a lot of money in my options yesterday. It kind of made up for the, you know, the the, the sucking out of the premium in, in Bitcoin. Um, but we'll see. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna go out another month, maybe go out to September, you know, besides trading the IBIT from time to time. Matter out of void, you know, the 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 miners have just been horrendous, you know, not horrendous, just they don't, they're not trading in continuity with Bitcoin at times. I think coin's been the best um, to trade. I haven't traded coin in a while. You know, um, this is your, your daily chart. Coin um, came off lows yesterday, so you'll see if this holds. Um, so, you know, th this has given you a lot of really good moves. I remember trading coin down here. Like, I, I always have the old levels that I've been, had on, sorry, um, on, on the charts. And, this was a fantastic trade. I remember at 88 when it took out 114 and then, you know, it even corrected and gave you another entry down here. And now the question is, you know, what's next here? Um, you do have yesterday's low. So if you're trading coin, you have 235. So, you know, that's that. Um, I am not that active there. You know, I've been trading the AI semis. I've been trading the, the, the it's no longer the Magnificent Seven. It's just the, the mega caps and, um, and then I, you know, throw Morgan Stanley and the Goldman in there, throw silver and gold in there, throw AVGO a few times in there, you know, uh, Qualcomm a few times. Anyway, yeah, post having sometimes is a sell. That's true. But if they sell it prior to the having, then sometimes it rallies thereafter. The same way the old school events, if they if they run it into an event, then they sell the event. At this point, they ran it into, you know, they just ran it two weeks ago. So I don't know exactly where we'll be then. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Just know what you can handle. Know your size. If you accumulate Bitcoin over time, I think you're going to win. You know, in my December report, I said it can go to 100,000 in 2025. I wasn't thinking 2024. Kind of said, hey, maybe it can, but uh, we'll see what happens now. Good morning, Marco. How's Spain treating you? You know, Marco, my man in Spain, in Marbella. You know, if you haven't been to Spain, go to Spain. It's a great place to visit. I hear a lot of people are actually starting to retire there instead of Florida. Great weather. You got skiing, got great food, no school shootings, a lot of great stuff going on in Marbella with the great art as well. But anyway, all right, so here we are. Let's end with the cues. The cues are, are in this channel. Um, you know, it's been in the channel pretty much since March. We'll see if that continues. You know, you have 438 is yesterday's low. Um, you have a gap to see if it gets filled. If this gap does not get filled in the next few sessions, chances are it's going to test this gap. Um, you know, there, there are some things to do. I would be very, very specific. If you make money, keep it, you know, and have lowered expectations for now. Um, I have a feeling we're going to be in this choppy type of environment until at least the jobs report Friday. Then we'll see what happens in the jobs report. And then we have to wait to see, you know, where we are come earnings season and the banks are going to kick it off first. And chances are they've had huge moves. So, you know, those might not be compelling option trades either. So when it's not compelling, don't put your hard earned money on the line. You know, make a little bit low gross, low net, figure it out. You know, you're going to hear stagflation everywhere. And, you know, that's kind of the environment we're in right now. You know, so uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And uh, I wish you well. well. What could you control? You can control your process, your routine, your mind. You can control how you burn off a bad day and how you make sure you just continue to coast, you know, during good days and not coast and get smacked and not get ahead of yourself. You know what? I'm, um, and, uh, and, and it's going to be springtime soon. The rains will stop. The sun will come out. And hopefully, 
you know, maybe you have a race on the schedule and you have some good things lined up and you're enjoying life because you never know when your number is going to get cold. And make sure to friggin' watch uh, <laughs> the girls' basketball on top of the boys' basketball because the Final Four is going to be pretty cool. Kaylin Clark, she's a friggin' awesome. Love to see it. Love to see the attention around them as well. So that's good stuff. Good stuff. Later, guys. And uh, I will have to say this at the end of it. You better make sure you stand during the national anthem. That's that.